Skeleton is a sport where racers sprint to the starting line, dive headfirst onto a steel sled, then steer down the winding ice track at more than 80 miles an hour. This is world champion skeleton racer Noelle Pikes Pace. It's 7.30 p.m. and she's about to take her first training run of the season. But you don't get to slide, as the skeleton athletes call it, just by showing up at the track. Let's see how her training day began. We try to get them just really quick, and it's to get that speed going. Noelle is the youngest of eight kids and loves country music. She's also a wife and mother of a daughter who's almost two. Even with her family responsibilities, Noelle has a sick work ethic. Her warm-ups are longer than most people's entire work ethic. And again, you try and stay tall and do it really quick. Because skeleton requires a running start, racers use a lot of track and field techniques in their training. High kicks and let your leg go all the way back. One of the things that I'm thinking about is making sure I'm on my toe. Like I don't want to be flat-footed. Then I do it to the side as well. One other thing that's a really good drill is to do hurdlers, bringing your leg up and around so it's strike and you come around. Make sure you get it all the way around. The push facility is where athletes come to replicate their on-ice starts and to train in warmer months. This is what we train on. So I am going to get a lesson in how to go down this scary hill on that little thing. Are you excited? Well, I'm afraid of heights, and it's, we're not that high up, thankfully, but that little dip down there, and it's all concrete. <laughs> this is money. I can feel it. Oh boy, that was awful. Wow. <laughs> Now keep in mind, Noelle is a world caliber uh, skeleton athlete. Don't try this at home. <laughs> you're giving everything you've got for 40, 50 meters, and so naturally you're just going to be kind of a little bit out of breath. And then the hard part is being able to calm your heart rate down and being able to like take a breath and relax so that we can focus on what lies ahead and not think about what just happened. Her bright, unwavering spirit pushed her through a long recovery process after a major injury. In 2005, before the turn games, you were the favorite going in, and then you were hit by a bobsled. After I took a training run in Calgary, it was at our Olympic trials in 2005, a bobsled came out of the track. They um, came out of the end of the track where five of us were waiting for a track to go up to the top, and it hit me from behind, and um, my right leg on, on the back of my calf, and I had an open um, tibia, fibula fa fracture. And where is the rod exactly? My bones came out right here and they put a rod down through my knee and down to my ankle and then they put in some screws on the sides. And does it bug you or do you have to kind of finesse um, it? Do you know it's there? I can tell when it's gonna rain. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, it like gets really achy. For the 2006 Olympics, she was named as an alternate to the team. But four years later, Noelle's at the top of her game and again is a favorite going into Vancouver. So Noelle, what are we looking at here? This is the bottom of my sled. Um, so this is the part that's actually on the ice. My husband actually made this sled for me just for this year. Crazy Did he do the stickers too? No, that's just me. <laughs> oh, okay. This is my baby. Flipping the sled over, Noelle talks about proper racing form. It's just tucking your arms in really tight and then keeping your legs straight and your feet together, your toes pointed. I actually try to touch my chin on, I mean obviously I have a helmet on, and so I have a chin guard, and I try to touch that chin guard on the ice. Does that make sure hurt? I'm low Is it Does that no, painful? No, it doesn't. I mean, I don't drag it. It's just like once in a while, just to make sure I'm low enough, I'll try to touch it down, and then I lift it back up just to make sure I'm, I have my aerodynamic form. When you're going 80 miles an hour, it's such an adrenaline sport, but at the same time, there's finesse. You know, it's like a rhythmic dance. You're going in, you're stirring up and out and down, and it's just so flowy. Like, it seems like we're like these hardcore athletes, right? Like, you know, going 80, 90 miles an hour, head first, down this crazy shoe device, but it really is all about just like feeling a rhythm and dancing your way down the track. During the day, Noelle will continue her workouts on a running track and in the weight room. And before rocketing down the track in the evening, she and her fellow racers study every curve and visualize a game plan in their heads, like students preparing for a final exam. But here, if they screw up, they don't get a lower grade. They crash. For me, it's like a puzzle. Like if you think about a puzzle and how they all fit together perfectly, and it's finding out which piece goes with which piece. And so you say, okay, well, I need to steer up here and then steer down. Okay, I figured out that curve. That's perfect. I got this piece set. 
going through a straightaway, a lot of times you'll have a tendency if you breathe at all, and especially after doing that big sprint, you have a, you know you're breathing really hard, and and so it'll kind of make your slide sway back and forth, and and you really want to make sure that when you come out of a curve, you're looking straight at the entry where you want to enter, and then you try and figure it out how it can go into the next curve. So you can set yourself for a good entry and a good exit so that that exit will set up for a good entry. So to me it's just a challenge to figure out where those pieces go and, and to make it a perfect puzzle. As I'm looking down at the ice I can see how it's kind of rounded and then you can see where it kind of goes into a 90. So you just get down in this angle and you can kind of see where it's going to start to get straight. And so I know that right around here is where I'm going to let go of my, my second steer in this curve so that it will hold me on the curve and I can get a nice entry in the curve too. Pretty fun, huh? <laughs> like all gravity sports, because the G-force pressure is extreme, the athletes have to be strong. Racers steer by applying torque to their sleds. They'll use their shoulders and knees to twist the sleds and even their toes to control direction. After the track walk, we're back where we started. Noel getting ready to ride. Since winning the overall World Cup title in 2005, she's broken a leg, won a world championship, started a family, and struggled with injury and doubt. But this season, she's been strong. Before the start, Noelle pictures every twist and turn, which also has the effect of relaxing her body. And when you're loose and skeleton, you're fast. And when you're as fast as Noelle Pike's pace, you could be as good as gold. This is Sean Gregory reporting for Time.com.